Former McGill Chancellor and prominent Montreal journalist Greta Chambers dies at 90. Greta Chambers, the first female Chancellor of McGill University and a prominent Montreal journalist for several decades, has died at the age of 90. She passed away Saturday morning at St. Mary's Hospital in Montreal after undergoing treatment for a heart condition. Viewed by many as a leader of the English community in a time of linguistic and political upheaval, Chambers, the daughter of a French-speaking mother and English-speaking father, always saw her role more as that of a builder of bridges and understanding between Quebec's divided linguistic communities. I just always felt the importance of explaining, English and French, one to the other, of who we were she told the Quebec Community Groups Network, QCGN, in 2012, when she was the recipient of the Association's Gold Bloom Award for Distinguished Community Service. When you think about what we need in Quebec, she embodied it Sylvia Martin Laforge, Director General of the QCGN, said Saturday. She embodied the bridge building between the minority and majority communities. She was way before her time. I remember Mrs. Chambers as a grande dame for Quebec. Born into a family where spirited debate was a dinner-time staple, one brother became an engineer, the other is internationally renowned philosopher Charles Taylor. Chambers graduated from McGill University at age 20 with a degree in political science. She married Egan Chambers, who went on to become a federal member of Parliament for the Progressive Conservatives in 1958, and with whom she had five children. Egan Chambers died in 1994. She went on to become a researcher and host on the province in print on CBC Radio from 1966 to 1980, a weekly program about Quebec events. She also wrote a weekly column for the Montreal Gazette from the late 1970s until 2002, and was host of The Editors, a weekly public affairs show on CFCF 12 from 1977 to 1980. Nobody in Montreal was reading the Chicoutimi Times then she told the QCGN. I was reading 140 newspapers a week and condensing it into a 15-minute program. My job was to try to tell the listeners what the people in Quebec were thinking. She was named Chancellor of McGill in 1991, the first woman to obtain such a position in Quebec, and stayed on till 1999. Based on a report she authored in 1992, Quebec Premier Robert Barassa created the Advisory Board on English. Education and asked her to be its first chairman, touring the province to seek information and solutions. It was a time when Bill 101 had tightened regulations on English schooling and enrolment in English schools had dropped by 57%. First among the board's 29 resolutions, and the only one anyone paid any attention to, she said, was that access be opened up to English schools, particularly for English-speaking immigrants. That report was visionary, said Martin Laforge. We can still look to that report for insight on how to maintain the vitality of English-speaking school boards. Chambers was named a member of the Order of Canada in 1994 and a companion of the Order of Canada in 2000. She was also a named an officer of the Ordre National du Québec in 1993. She was involved with the Montreal Children's Hospital Research Institute, Heritage Montreal and was a regular contributor to news programs and newspapers in both official languages. At home, her children remembered her as a positive force, full of energy and as proactive in her personal relationships as she was in her more public roles. She was intensely engaged in everyone she met, whether it be a chance acquaintance or someone in her family, where she was very intensely engaged said her son, Bill. The human side of it was extremely important to her and she was intensely good at it. Privately she was good and helpful and supportive, and that kind of quality inside the family was pretty similar to how she was facing outwards as well said her son, Jeffrey.
She liked to solve problems between people, particularly groups of people, by listening and saying, I see your point of view, I see the other's point of view, I think we could probably find a solution to this issue, Jeffrey said. She was just good at it. Following in his mother's footsteps, Jeffrey Chambers is now vice president of the board of directors of the QCGN, and says her policy of stating one's concerns calmly and with purpose still resonates. The English-speaking community have made a lot of big contributions and we continue to have a lot to offer, and as members of a group that are still living here because we like it here, it's important for us to put those points forward in a positive way and a constructive way, he said. Speaking to the QCGN in 2012 at the age of 85, Greta Chambers put it more forcefully. The English community has to think of itself as a very important economic cog, she said. If they start getting skittish, as seems to be the case now, then the community is going to go on shrinking. If they don't start helping themselves, then no one is going to help them. And it will be a big loss for Quebec. Greta Chambers leaves behind five children, Susan, Jeffrey, Michael, Simone, and Bill, eight grandchildren, and warm memories of a long and happy life said her grandson, Willie Lowry, now working as a journalist in the United Arab Emirates. Among the best memories were the family dinners. It was a good dining room table, lots of engaged discussion that you may have seen as an argument from the outside, but never with rancor, always with a lot of breadth of acceptance of different points of view Jeffrey said. And some humor. She'll leave a big hole.